holler and holler back. Holler back. Joey Hollenbeck. All right, now it is. All right, everyone, thanks for listening to another episode of Hollering with Hollenbeck. We got Joey Hollenbeck on the mic. What's up? And uh, Travis Kenny from Full Buddy Cast. What we're going to do is just kind of kick it, grip it, rip it, uh, double flip it, and dip it. Dip it, but not stick it. No, nope. no, we do not stick. We do not stick our landings here. We're not known for sticking our landings. Uh, so I don't know. I kind of want to catch up. Okay, been a little bit. We we rapid fired some of our episodes several weeks ago. Yeah, turned out pretty good. They too. were good. One of them. I mean, they were all pretty good. But the 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 middle one was. I was hearing from people that it might have been their favorite episode ever, ever, ever of you and I. Really, we just were just on our grind. We were. I mean, we were clicking. We were. I feel like it's the, the first it's episode. About time. We're like episode eighty nine. <laughs> the first episode is like the one that kind of warms you up. The third one is that you're too little, too tankered, and everything's sticking out. <laughs> we're talking about everything. Uh, the middle one, though, that's the good one. We're that's we're we're hitting that zone. Yeah, so. that zone. Um, so do you need to be warmed up at all? I mean, go ahead. I kind of want to warm. I stay warm, but go ahead. I kind of want to warm you up a little bit, if you don't, if you don't mind. I don't mind, Trav. Um, so, were you a TV boy? Were you were you kind of babysat by the TV back in the day here and there? I mean, like, do you know a good TV theme show song? That's the question. Do you know your TV theme theme show songs? I mean, yeah, if I hear it, if I hear it, I'm not going to just, I can't just start singing it. Maybe like Cheers, you, I can, but. Okay, let's try this. Oh, boy. We're going to get through this. Get through what? No, we're going to not get through it. I'm going to play random TV theme show songs. Oh, I'll just tell you what they were. And we're going to see if you can figure it out. Let's dance. Okay, let's dance. All right, so let me shuffle them real quick. Batman and Robin? Batman. Okay, you got it. All right. Well, it said it. That's why. Yeah, you, you, you nailed hey, it. Good one. Good one, Trav. <laughs> that was a... This one's easy. Fresh Prince. There you go. Well, that was a real brain buster. So, sorry. Sorry. I can picture it. I can't HBO. It it's got... Uh, what's his name? Curb your oh, enthusiasm. Enthusiasm, yeah. I thought they were like old, like when we were kids. Uh, this was a uh, AMC Mad Men. Oh, Mad Men! I know somebody who watches that a lot. You probably don't know this one. Unbra- Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Did you ever watch that? Probably not. Okay, here we go. Okay, next segment. No, we're gonna keep <laughs> these. I thought you'd be better at this. Here we go. Here we go. Every, I can, I know, you, I know you what said it. it. I, what? Cheers. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you got me. All, you got me all twisted up. All in the family. You weren't a TV guy, man. No, I didn't watch a ton of TV. Honestly, here's the deal. Twin Peaks, Washington State. All right. So I do. I mean, I will get into a series and like grind it, watch it, you know. Yeah. And then. Like as a kid, like I had the things that I liked, and I would watch that, and then I watch a ton of Food Network. So then, if I did like TV theme shows for Food Network, you'd be like, "Oh yeah, for sure." I mean, and then like Property Brothers, like, "Oh yeah, Property Brothers," and <laughs> <laughs> Chip and Jubain, I mean. <laughs> just oh yeah, I know that's uh, that's li- that's love it or list it. Oh, that's Chip's laugh. <laughs> <laughs> um uh cooking though yeah. so 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 you're big you're just watching all the cooking shows you know the tv themes i mean i, I not even the, i just like to watch them i like to see what people are making like i was watching a show last night and i like cooking steaks and they were cooking like sirloin was like one of their like top sirloin was one of their cuts Ooh, that they yeah. had to cut. and i like a good top sirloin but right. it was just interesting to see how different people cook them and how they incorporate it in different things. So, so I, I cooked the steak this past week. I'm getting better at it. Yeah. I'm getting better at it. Okay. My main thing is that I put it in for too long in the oven, and so now I'm kind of cutting it down, dialing it back. Why do you put it in the oven? So just throw it on the grill. Well, I mean, I, I sear, sear, and then 
it was raining, so then I put it in the oven. You seared it on the grill first? No, I seared it. Oh, I seared it in my in my uh, microwave. No, no, no. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> cast iron or something. Yeah, my cast yeah, iron. Yeah. 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 Put, I, I got rosemary that's growing out of here. Oh yeah, cut it. Doo, doo. Put it yeah, in there I with some that. little butter, little salt, little pepper, mm-hmm. and then uh, and then seared it. Put, and then I, now, but then I put it in the oven for like a little bit and let it pull it out. But you have a thermometer? <clears throat> I do. That's I what do. You need. you need to go spend like fifteen or sixteen bucks yeah, and get the Weber one or oh. a, a digital one. It's a digital one. You get it like Fred Meyer either. probably or Rite Aid or the hardware Aid's. store probably has it because they sell all that barbecue oh, yeah, stuff yeah. too. Um, Turn it on, dude. Pull it when it hits like I don't. I like a medium steak, so I pull it with like one thirty, one thirty five, and then let it rest. And then what I've been doing is making like a take like a stick of butter, a half stick of butter, and let it come to room temperature. Throw it in like a Tupperware or something. Add like gorgonzola crumbles and like dried rosemary to it, and just stir it all together. Put it back in the fridge. Go start my steaks. Cook my steaks after my steaks are done and they're resting. I take that butter and just put it on there and smear it all over, dude. I'm telling you, you could you could. I cannot wait to try that. You right could now. put a. You could. I cannot wait to try that. You could legit like freaking barbecue a cow hoof, and it would taste delicious. Oh my! <laughs> That's how I feel about Mrs. Buttersworth. You can put that on some dog poop, and I eat it. Mrs. It's just delicious. Yeah. Um, okay. Wow, that's a great idea. So then you do it. You, you just do, make like a compound butter. You could put it. So in you just cook it. it without any seasoning. No, I season it too. Oh. I season the steak. And then throw, but then you throw a at little. the end when it's rest, like when you yeah. take it off and let it rest for like five minutes. Put that butter on there, and the butter just basically is just more, so much more flavor, dude. It's so good. Gosh. I'm gonna make it. I'm is it weird it being? A, I'm gonna make those tonight. Is it is it weird being a, like a food genius? Is it weird? Like I'm not. I'm. I just really. I. It's like my hobby, so I really enjoy it. Like same thing would be like me talking to you about Fortnite. <laughs> I don't play Fortnite, <laughs> PUBG, you know, buddy. Yeah, I don't even know what that is. Yeah, because you're dumb. You're not a genius anymore. <laughs> Do Take your research. Back. Do your research. That's our new one. <laughs> hey, I was at a I was at a little campfire the other night. Um, met some people. Met some guys that were uh, actually met one guy I haven't talked to in a long time. And uh, anyway, <clears throat> this guy. So you knew him. You didn't meet him. Well, I knew him. I guess I re met him. You ever had that where you're yeah. like, man, I've we've met before, but yeah. it's been. 20 years exactly so we were we were kicking around we we're talking and you came up we yeah. were talking about the podcast and and a few other things and he's like oh yeah that uh, you got one with joey and i'm like he's got one with me <coughs> but uh that's Cough's still there <coughs> yeah anyway he's like uh <laughs> he's like yeah man i had some i got some stories about him oh yeah yeah so he said that sure uh, a lot of people have stories about me yeah they do uh, he goes. I, I feel bad. I used to pick on him, pick on him all the time. You know, it's just to shove him into lockers. No, that didn't happen. I'm just joking. But he's he did say he's younger. He would actually hang out with. I think it was uh, either Josh, maybe or some one of your other other brothers. But that you would be like 13, 14, pouring yourself like a vodka soda. No, I was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. He was like 14, 13 or no. He said four, he said fourteen, fifteen vodka soda. And uh, and then like your mom would be like, "Hey, what are you doing over there?" You're like, "Pour some pop, mom. Just got some pop. Got some soda pop." And she's like, "All right, that, be- that better be it." I don't remember that. And, yeah. So uh, anyway, some some 15 year old Joey just and then he would look. He, they said that you'd turn around and look at them, and be like, <laughs> like, like the, I got, "I'm sure I did. Got I'm sure I did. I went through a phase where I was a little bit wild." Yeah. Yeah. Not just, anymore. Not anymore. Just a just mellow, calm, calm teddy bear, mellow dude. Um, so yeah, did you did you sneak a little here and there? I'm um, sure. Yeah, I'm sure. We, we talked. I remember in high school, like Kevin would stay the night and we'd get into the vodka. Like not crazy, but right. like, you know, we'd have like, your kids. Yeah, we'd, I mean, but we were high school, but we'd take like take like a couple pulls off of it, or like pour like a little drink or something, and then fill it back up with water. <laughs> they didn't put it in the freezer, so nobody knew. <laughs> You know, my business partner, I went up to his house one time and we were, I was like, he's like, you want a drink? I'm like, yeah. Pulls a vodka out, it's frozen. I'm like, he's like, that's weird. I'm like, come on, bro. <laughs> like, he's got three sons. I'm like, come on, dude. Vodka doesn't freeze. He's like, what the shit's going on? <laughs> <laughs> you know? You got played. You got played. Uh, well, the kids got played because they didn't realize that vodka doesn't freeze. Yeah. And, and, and maybe he didn't, he wouldn't have realized it until right. you came along and said, come on, man. Right. So, we were talking about daughters dating last year or last episode. Yeah. But this, what I wanted to ask you this time, I feel like when we were kids, either I'm just getting the wool pulled over my eyes because I got a 17 year old, I got a 16 year old, you know, I got a 13 year old. I feel like they're never getting in any trouble. 
like never getting in any trouble. And I used to know like all the people that had how to get in trouble. And these kids are like, they're like, they ain't sneaking out that I can tell. They ain't like, maybe you, you I got the casino till one in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I get home, they're home. <laughs> <laughs> They're never sneaking out. Great point. <laughs> Wonderful point. And I don't have cameras. I don't have cameras, but I tell them that I do. I tell, I'm like, is oh, that what that huge blue cord is that runs to the, yeah. uh, the, the podcast room? Yeah, no, it clotheslined me when I came to the phone. It's my internet, but yes, <laughs> yes, I do. I like to tell them that, hey, by the way, that there's cameras around and there's none. Oh. It's great. But I'm also a little worried because you kind of want to give your teenagers like a little bit of rope. To make some bad decisions? You just open a white claws and leave a little straw in them. <laughs> a little umbrella. <laughs> just right next to where they sit. <laughs> Do it. Uh, <laughs> but no, but what I'm saying is like, I kind of want to give them a little bit of a, of, a, of, a, of a leash to make some bad decisions. Not saying that I want them to, but because then they're going to hit college someday. They're going to be not in my house. And then it's going to be like full on. Boom. Here's one thing that, like, I can definitely attest to. Like, my mom was super cool with me. Like, she was like, don't be stupid. Don't, like, this is when I was older, you know? And I was, no, I was 16, 17, whatever, you know? Before I had, like, my goal of what I was going to do and go play football and stuff. But my mom was super cool. She was like, you know what? When we were in high school, we would go to parties. We would, whatever. She was like, you do not ever drink and drive. And if you ever need a ride, come get me. It wasn't like, it was a leash, but it wasn't her just giving me free reign to do whatever I wanted. You know what I mean? She knew that I was going to go to parties. She knew that there was, I was going to be around people that were drinking or what, you know, whatever else was going on in high school at that time. And I think for me, I grew up real fast Mm. and was around it and then was over it. I mean, it wasn't like my main goal. Right. Right. And that helped me a ton in my later years in high school and going to college. And I mean, I was able to, yeah, I partied in college and stuff, but it wasn't like, oh, I'm at college. I'm going to go crazy. Right. Like some dudes, some dudes that I've played with in college, like were so, excuse me, sheltered and whatever else that like once they got away, dude, it was like game on every day, all day missing stuff like just like crazy mm. so a guy i know he has three sons and he has a nice cabin in easton but it's just you're not gonna do anything in easton you know right and you know some of the high school this kid his youngest is a senior in high school now so some of them go up there they'll go up there and they'll have beers and hang out and be kids you know sure whatever and uh I think some of the other parents know about it. He was just at like their spring break. He took his kid and a bunch of other kids went to Mexico, not just with him, but their families too. And one of the parents kind of called him out. I was like, Oh yeah, you're the guy that, uh, you let the kids go to the cabin and drink. And he was like, I don't let them do that, but I'd rather them do that there. Right. Than someplace I don't know about. And he said, I also, I'd rather them see and be around it. Then be sheltered from it and go absolutely bananas when the when they could step away. You yeah. Know? So I think there's a fine line. I, I I mean, I agree with what you're saying as far as <laughs> you want to give them that leash to do a little something. A little bit. I mean, here's the thing too. I think that it is. Uh, there's a lot of life lessons in that too. Oh sure. You know, making mistakes or screwing up or whatever that looks like. Not necessarily screwing up, but. Just seeing like, oh, I do not want to be like that person. Or, right. I am not going to do that or, you know. And I think for me, you know, for me, I even thought it kicked it around. A of all, I thought my own life. When I was like 17, 18, when I started committing my life to Christ, when I started like thinking about God, thinking about like your future, I started thinking like, okay, well, like I understand that a lot of this stuff that's going on right now really – doesn't matter in the long run it's just how i live my life during that like it doesn't matter if i go to college if i make a billion dollars or if i just slug it out at some minimum wage job in in the grand scheme of things for my own personal happiness i'm not saying for everyone else but for my own personal happiness it was like okay well 
I'm not going to go to college. I don't want to get myself in a massive amount of debt um, right off the bat. You know, I wasn't getting any scholarships or anything like that. So nothing against college. But for me, I, I, I saw that if you – it's not really what you know so much as who you know. And you may get there at some point. So it took me a while to get there, probably a lot longer than it would if I did go to college, right, But and get a degree. But I was able to get to a place where I'm feeling very comfortable with what I'm doing and making decent money doing it. So uh, there's a but, – but then it wasn't until – it wasn't until I started seeing like life, what I thought was life. I had thought I figured out life until I started hitting some bumps and bruises down the road um, was that's when I started, re- I guess, rebelling more. Like I was never an underage drinker. Me I was, neither. <laughs> I was never. I One thing I did stay away from though and will probably forever until I'm like 70, stay away from is drugs. Like yeah. drugs scare the crap out of me. Me too. I don't mess with anything. Yeah, that scares the piss out of me. Me too. Because I feel like you could you could get addicted like that, and it could take you down a, a road that you really don't want to go down. And I'm I, like, I don't. I won't even like after surgeries. I I, I yeah. take the very minimum of like pain pills. Like I'll take a pain pill to go to sleep at night, like one a day, maybe, and maybe maybe two a day, like right after surgery. Like I don't mess with it. They're like, you need to take two of these four times, you know, every four hours. And I did that one time and I was like a zombie. I'm like, I'm not doing it. Like, it's not my thing. I don't, <laughs> right. I don't like it. I, I mean, yeah. if I can knock the edge off to go to sleep at night and sleep through the night or close to it, then I'll take one. But like, right. as far as like, you know, oh, I, I can't wait to get the, like, exactly. it's not my game. I don't like it. And I don't see like people that, I don't like anything. I don't like weed. I don't like anything. Right. And it was I like a, having beers. They're having beers. Yeah. Little beers, right? Beers yeah. kick back. But for me, even when I was on Adderall for, ADHD. Hey, you got any more of that? I wanted to get. <laughs> Why'd you start scratching your neck? Um, <laughs> so, hey, you got any more of that? <laughs> I wanted to get off it as as fast as possible because I could. I could already tell it was changing my personality. Like, it, not not for a craving, but more of like it mellowed me out, which is it's is what it's supposed to do. But then I felt like I was becoming a robot and I was losing that Travis that likes to have emotion and likes to feel and likes to be a part of life and enjoy life. And instead I became this like almost like this monotone emotion dude. And it just I, mellowed you out way too It mellowed me out like completely to where I had no emotions. It killed so many things in me that – uh, That would have sucked. Like you wouldn't have been able to like – Lay in bed and talk to Jamie and get pissed off and cry <laughs> in the middle of the night. And okay, hear so all that stuff. here's a few things. Okay, <laughs> okay, yes, that as that, she's trying to sleep, that's that maybe could have helped in those situations, <laughs> but those are like a diamond. Oh no, a diamond doesn't. That means that happens all the time. Diamond in the rough. That, uh, yeah, diamond rough. Very rarely does that happen, but uh, but no, for the most part. You know, I I didn't want something else also controlling my emotions. I wanted to learn how to control my emotions too. What was, right. Why did you have to get on Adderall? Is it just because you couldn't focus or what? It was, is that what that stuff is? That, yeah. My ADHD, when I was working in the dairy department, I you know, you've got eggs to fill. You've got milk to fill. you got to order. you got yogurt. I would show up. I'd start halfway through filling up the eggs. I'd just like, like, screw it. And almost, grab like all the chocolate milk and start slamming no, it? No, no. I would actually like be like a squirrel filling out, filling out, filling out the, the eggs or the, 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 the milk for a little bit. And then I'd like glance to see the eggs. Oh, crap. The eggs are all out. And then I would run and I wouldn't even fill up the milk all the way. And then I'd go get my six wheeler and start filling up the eggs. And halfway through the eggs, I'd look at, oh, the cheese is almost gone. And then I just, <laughs> and I would never get everything all the way done. And so I went to the doctor and I said, hey, dude, like, I know why I'm ADHD. Uh, and he's like, well, you need to fill out this test. And then I fill out the test. He's like, oh, yeah, I know. You're definitely ADHD. And I'm like, yeah. You just have to fill out a test. That's it. I had to take out this test. He had to ask me a few questions. And, and like, my compulsive, am, am I compulsive? Give him examples of that. And, yeah, I'm very I'm very distracted. Like, that's fun. That looks fun. Do you I see that squirrel over there? Yeah, that squirrel. Squirrel. Right through, yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> so then he's like, well, take Adderall. Write down your list of what you want to do in a day. And then get into the – just that habit and get yourself in a habitual move. Him. Give it three days. You'll be right in the mode. Yeah. And so that was it. I would write down and then I would check off, okay, I've got the milk all done. Then I'd move to the eggs. Then so, and so then I would weed myself off it and I was already – I was in habit mode at that. So people who don't have ADHD and take Adderall, does that – it gives them like 
laser focus. And yeah, like that's kind of like what the zipping around. Sherman was doing. A few other people were doing. That's when they got busted on Adderall. Is that it was a college thing where you could at the time prior, you know, you would like dead focus dead on whatever. Focus. If it's you almost like Limitless, that. dude. When I watched Limitless, I'm like, that's how it was when I was on Adderall. I need some of that. Oh, dude, it, and it and it cuts like I wasn't eating. It cuts weight. I was done. To, I'm 250. I was at 180. When I was on it, the dude told me, and this is what screwed me up eating wise. Once I got off of it, he's like, you need to eat double the portions. You need to start eating double the portions because you need to. I definitely need that stuff. (laughs) So, so then I started eating double the portions. And then when I weaned myself off of it, habit, I'm just eating double portions and then bulk up and then see habit. Yeah. It's bad stuff. So yeah, you got to get the habit. So I get Adderall again, cut down, get in the habit of barely eating and then take myself off. We talked way too long about that, but I'm just what, what, what I'm saying is, I mean, that's a little insight into Travis. But with the kids, I almost want to tell them the opposite. Like, I wish I raised them saying, "Hey, guys, who wants a beer?" And then, or who want? They're seven or eight. Like, there's a they're, they're doing drugs. They're getting involved, in, and so then when they get to seven or eight doing drugs. Oh yeah, I know the whole. And then when they turn what? eighteen, because then they're going to naturally want to rebel against me, and then they clean up their life at that point because no, they're like, bro, "What?" That's not how it works. <laughs> I would recommend um, – I mean, I I know people that like with their kids will be like, give me a beer. They'll make – they'll have them make the drinks or they'll do whatever. Like there's – I mean, that's their thing. It doesn't bother me at all. Um it was just never my thing. But the uh, – I mean, I don't know. I think – another thing is, is I think that if your kids are around it, like seeing – People having beers and glass of wine or popping champagne up during football games or whatever that looks like. I mean, they're around it. They, it's like a normal thing when people when kids don't see that and then they see what really is going on. Like when with their friends are right. they get to college, True. it's like crazy. Like they're like, oh, okay, I guess I'll try it. And then one, it's like it's like heroin, dude. One beer and you're like, I'm in. I'm in. You know, yeah. I mean, I, not to everybody, not for right. everybody, but. Well, yeah, then you start and, – and it's a bro thing. It's a girl thing. It's like you're 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 having your time. Uh, you know, when I was growing up, my dad was – he'd have Henry Weinhards and Rainier beer. and Dude, the, Henry's a good beer. Yeah. So that it was a, for me as a kid kind of growing up and being around it, it, he wasn't just getting wasted every night. It was just having a couple beers after work, watching the TV, go to – have dinner, go to bed, you know, and uh, – Having a couple beers, watching some TV, smacking me around. <laughs> Smacking me around a little bit. Passing out in his chair. Cigarette. Catches the couch couch on fire. Trailer Uh, up in smoke. (laughs) Fourth trailer of the year. (laughs) Damn it, Dad. (laughs) That wasn't it at all. That's funny, though. I knew guys like that. (laughs) Damn it, Dad. (laughs) Mama, Papa. We're in the spare trailer again tonight? <laughs> the camper on the Ford truck, the 1962 Ford truck. I get the cab over part. <laughs> <laughs> you get your brother. <laughs> you get the fold down table, bitch. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. And then, so I don't know if you saw this viral video. This thing got me in the feels. Dude, I'm telling you guys. I don't know if, you, I don't know if you're the same way, Joey. But if you see a, I will get hit in the feels if it's a kid of a, 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 if it's a video of someone that reminds me of my own kid, whether it's their age, what you mean know. getting like choked up or something? Yeah. If there's something that's going on, like let's say they're doing something, whether it's a kid, it could be any viral video. The kid's playing some sport and that's cool, or maybe he's getting picked on, or they're getting a fight, or everything goes viral for different reasons. If I sure. see something that reminds me of my kid. Man, it's te- it's waterworks time. Really? Did you see the guy at the Holiday Inn that? The, I don't think so. Oh, this kid's grown up though. This is a, this is like a guy who's like in his twenties. Evan. So he's sitting there. He person that posted this is is kind of a known as a race baiter, right? He's kind of the guy that kind of wants to hey look at this video. This is a white person versus a black person. In the video though, it looked more like it was just. Two people that were annoyed and maybe... With each other? Yeah. White guy and a black guy. Yeah. It yeah. wasn't more of a race. I didn't think it was a race thing. It was just more of like two people that just happened to have some conflict. I could be wrong. I didn't see... I didn't... You know, I don't have the video prior to that or after that. So the 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 guy that's sitting behind the counter, the guy who works for Holiday Inn, he's a white guy. 
He's, oh, got, he's works there. Yeah, he works there. He's got a mask on. He's he's like typing in the reservation. But you the video picks up to where it sounded like this 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 holiday inn worker smacked his computer out of frustration. And now the other guy though that was holding the camera, he, he was also instigating it. Why he, is he holding the camera? While you're checking into a holiday inn. Because it seemed like there was conflict and he wanted to get it on camera. This guy hit his this guy hit his computer. He's so frustrated now. He his, so you're saying that and this is like I guess this is like at 2 a.m. So you're saying that 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 you don't have my reservation. Is that what you're saying? And he's like, and the guy's like, I'm trying to help you. And he's like, oh, yeah, it doesn't seem like you're trying to help me. Like kind of like egging him on, egging him on. He's like, sir, I've got mental problems. Please, I'm trying. It's not me. It's the computer. I'm trying to figure this out. I'm sorry. And the guy's like, it doesn't seem like you're trying to help me out. It doesn't seem like you know, egging him on, egging him on. This kid, this guy, I shouldn't say kid, this guy, probably mid twenties, behind the computer, behind the computer. Starts like full on punching himself in the head, just oh, just closed fist, not like a like, not, not like easy like, does it like actually punching. just trying to knock himself out, so to speak, just rapid fire, bop 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 bop, like Nolan Ryan on Robin Ventura. So, like, what are these guys doing? Laughing? No, this guy's like, oh, this is what you're gonna do. This is the type of people you have working at, at the Holiday Inn. The dude, the Holiday Inn guy, grabs his monitor and bashes his head into the monitor, breaks the monitor. This guy. Gets so, and then he stands up. He starts crying. Holiday Inn guy, you ruined my life. Oh, because the guy said, "Oh, you know you're on camera, right? You're about to go viral, right? You're about to go viral." So this guy stands up, is crying now. You ruined it. You're gonna ruin my life. You're gonna ruin my life. He walks off the side of the screen, just sticks his head in like this like half partial wall, and starts sobbing. Yeah. Just starts sobbing. We're in a pandemic. This dude is working at three a.m. Um, now there's reports that maybe he was, uh, drinking possibly the, the, the holiday in worker, but, but turned out that also could be that he kind of posted about it. He's like, Hey, that's me in the video. Cause when that's me, I went home, I started drinking, I drove back to work. He basically got terminated because he, he ended up finding out he tried drink, to drink it on the job. Okay. Well, maybe he was drinking beforehand. Again, I don't think it was a racial thing. It was just two people that, but one guy egging him on. And, but what, but what I'm trying to say is I saw my son there, like from, the, from his hair to just my own son who's 13 beats himself up. Not like physically, but like if he makes a mistake, 13 hard, dude, he shuts down and I, and I want to hug him and I just, and I, and I saw that guy and I just like, man, hurt people, hurt people, hurt themselves. Right. And so like, you just want to just, you know, hug that dude. And just go, man, like, why, you know, man. And, and I don't know. And so then it's kind of, so I woke up. Not woke up. I got up because I watched this in the video in the morning. And I walked to each of the kids' bedrooms. It's around 830. Yeah. I said, hey, Kane, love you. That's good. And I just woke up, went went over to Mad and Megan's room, knock on their door. They said, come in, come in. They're, they're laying there just kind of waking up. I'm like, love you guys. Love you, Madden. Love you, Megan. You know, just because you need to give, for me, I feel like, I got, and, and that was another thing that you said on the last episode yeah. was like, hey, they're, they're, it doesn't matter what age they are. No, not at all. They're going to listen to you. I agree with that. I just listened to a book. I, I mean, I, I like books. I just don't like to read them. Right, right. Yes. So I just listened to this book. You should check it out, dude. It's called uh, The Four Agreements. Mm. And it basically talks about like um, how – in your own mind, like how you judge yourself and how you, how you're your worst critic essentially and how to like get over that, how to like work through, um, different things. And it's, it's basically, it, 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 it taught, it's really good. I can't, I'm going to listen to it again, but it's basically like, uh, talking about to have impeccable words, like, like, and he breaks it down like completely like how to do that. Like, like your word, like to yourself, mm. you know? And then there's another one. That's, I think, oh, I'm trying to remember. It, I, I, shit. I wish I could remember what it was, but it's four agreements that are like, don't beat yourself up for that crazy life lessons. No, I know. But that's the moral of the story of this book is that it, um, it really gets you in a mindset that, from the outside, what people say, basically, like the first, the first agreement is about words. Basically, like you hmm. can either you can either put on like a good mojo, or you can put on like 
black magic on somebody, almost like a spell. Like, gotcha. you know, and they talk, he talked, well, like one of his examples was, um, if I went to one of my friends and said, Hey man, I haven't seen you in years. Your skin looks like somebody, your skin, I've seen that skin color before. It, 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 I've seen it in like cancerous people, like something like that. Yeah. And if you come in agreement, agreement with what that person just said to you, or what I what he just said to that person, and that person comes in agreement with it, he was like, almost ninety nine percent have cancer in a year because they agree they're in agreement with it, like just the way their so basically mind you're, and spe- body. you're speaking it into existence. Yeah, and then to break and then to talk about breaking, it's super interesting, dude. And, and I I could relate to it a ton, not necessarily that predicament, but just relate to it a ton on like even my whole life as far as like being told I was never going to be anything or never going to be a football player. And there's no way I could do that. And I didn't agree with that. And so I'm, I like as shitty as my childhood was and coming up with, not with my mom, but like with other people in that situation, they were telling me I couldn't do. And I had, I had a great core of people that told me I could do those things. Right. But if I would have bought into that, which so many kids bought buy into, uh, step parent or a parent or an outsider telling them that they're not good at something, then they buy into it and it's a done deal. They right. could have been the best athlete in the world so, or they could have been the best singer in the world or the best anything in the world. And I think that is where right now, and it could be just me, but I feel like we're in a crossroads in how to either A, be a boss, B, be a parent, C, be a friend and support. Um, you no, know, you have to be all three. You know, what I'm saying is though, is like, I, I worked for people that said, you're the biggest piece of crap in the world. You're slow. You're lazy. You're, and it would it actually motivated me yeah. to be like, I want to just – we're going to prove this idiot wrong. Same with me. But my, but not everyone's that way. Yeah, that's my whole point. Yeah, like, it's if crazy. You, if you – it's you should listen to this. Thing. I'm, I'm going it's to. It's on Audible. You can get it. It's called The Four Agreements. And it, it would give you a ton of insight into anything. Like one of the examples was um, – this mom worked uh, – ju- she she was a working mom, right? Came home and her six, seven-year-old daughter was like so happy to see her. And the, she had – the mom had a crazy long day. She had a migraine headache and was exhausted and this and that. She was sitting on the couch and the seven-year-old was singing and like jumping and like so happy and just like singing and singing and singing. Well, the mom, her headache was just – not that she meant anything, but – her headache in the days that she had worked all week and everything that had went on, she was like, she said something like, your, your voice is horrible right now. I can't take this right now. Oh, and wow. the kid never sang again. Oh, wow. Ever. And she could have, you know what I mean? It was just like these kids take these things literally. They do. And so do adults. Like everybody does. Yeah. Like if somebody says you're the dumbest person in the world and you buy into that and be like, shit, yeah, you know what? I am pretty dumb. Yeah. And then it takes a lot. You, it takes a compliment or somebody to say, you know what, or yourself, like, you know what, I'm not dumb. No, you know what, I can do that. Like, it's just like, it's like, I'm a huge believer in the mind, dude. I'm a ha- humongous yeah. believer in yes. the mind and visualization yes. and different things like that. Like, I'm telling you right now, and I, 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 I don't know why I did it or how what the deal was, but when I got to the Seahawks and they were sending me to Europe, every single day, I think we spoke about this before, every single night when I'd lay in bed, I would say over and over again to myself, I will play for the Seattle Seahawks. Mm. Over and over again, I'd fall asleep to that, Mm. saying that over, it may be 10 times, it may be 4,000 times that night. I would say it until I fell asleep every single night. And it's amazing how the mind and body work together. Mm. It's crazy because I remember being in training camp and thinking, man, I have to pick it up. I have to do this and that. And the running back coach, Stump Mitchell, who I think is with... I don't know where he's at now, but he's a running back coach still in the NFL. And he was like, during training camp, we were talking. He's like, man, you're doing a hell of a job. And I'm like, really? And he's like, yeah, you'd look great out there. He was like, keep it up. He's like, I think you're a shoe in. But in my mind, in my physical mind, it's crazy what you tell your mind over and over again that your body just continues to do. So, for instance, I was doing my, I was subconsciously out on the field doing everything. Great, but in my physical mind, I guess, or however that looks, I was like, "Oh, I'm not doing that good. I'm not, 
you know, I can improve on this and beating myself up. And that's another thing they talk about in this book is like judging and like judging yourself. You're, you're the biggest judge of anything, you know? So super interesting. I would recommend anybody listening or, I mean, even if you don't have any issues or anything like that, I would definitely recommend checking this book out. It's really good. It's called the four agreements. It's awesome. Awesome. Well, yeah. So, I mean, I, I will definitely listen to that because I need some of that. Uh, you know, I kind of got away from the self-help books um, because I feel like some of the self-help books that I used to read, they were Christian ones. But And, and not saying they were bad, but when you kind of got – you get in that same mentality of like, I got to improve, I got to improve, I got to improve. We all know that you need to improve. Yeah, but, but what's, what's the – what is the – and I agree with you, but what is the roadmap to do that? Like I can say I want to improve all day long. I can say I want a six pack. I can say that I'm gonna jog a mile every day, but physically with my hip, I'm I'm not jogging anywhere. Right. I'm barely doing walking upstairs. Like you know what I mean? It right. just sucks. It hurts. But I say like, I, I'm saying that you can get frustrated if you if you try to take on too much too soon. Yeah, but I, I think do, that. But I it's a mental game. It's just like anything. Yeah, if you, it's a if mental you, game. Well, just like when you start working out. You work out for four days and you're like, I don't see any results yet. Right, right. Stop. No, right. but if you're consistent with something, day in and day out, after 20, 30 days, you're going to see a result. It just comes down to consistency. I would recommend for men, as a man thinketh, and women too. It's a great book and it's not very long. As a man thinketh and the four agreements. All right, I'll check those out. Those are good recommendations. I like it already. Um, yeah, I think for me, I was, I was, t- you know, when you sometimes have a kid that will like A, start to get Fs or Ds or their grades start slipping just a little bit. It, it's weird when some people just need praise. They just be told they can do it. Yeah. They already think they can't do it. But here's what, I, what, 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 as you were talking, you were saying the mind and the, and the body. My cousin, he's a guy that he found out he had some, he has some gut thing, bacteria. Yeah. From probiotics. eating. Need some probiotics. Well, what it is is that he has to cut his diet. And the crazy thing is, is that if he basically for every year that he ate this way, it like takes two, one month to two month reversal. So if he ate this way for 14 years, he's got to go for like 14 to 28 months of eating a different way. To reverse it back. Yeah. And I think what you said, if you, you know, sometimes it's not like just some one guy, I mean, maybe it is, but it's usually if you've been living all of these years thinking a certain way about yourself, a negative way, because someone spoke something into your life early on, what were you thinking? I hate that so much. I too. I've got, I've got people in my life that use that with their own kids. What and, and 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 it's like the worst thing you probably tell your kids. Or say that you're stupid or you're an yeah. idiot. Yeah, what are you, what are you doing, idiot? Like yeah, it's like it's I like, hate that. I hate it. I hate it more than anything. I want to punch them in the face. Because I'm just, like, it's just it's as from a kid standpoint, it's hurtful, dude. And you yeah. can't like you can't like make them think they're weird or dumb or right. stupid because then they're not going to recover from that because then they're going to start having these 14 years of thinking about it. How many? And then it's going to be it's going to take a while to get them to slowly like. Just keep thinking positive and all that. So no, I'm good. The um oh, I read this thing one time and I think it has a lot to do with life in general, but um well, this was years ago, dude. And I like I said, I'm really into the mind body thing. Yeah. Just like because I it, it I I've seen it work in my life. So it's like but one of the, the one of the things I read way back in the day was there was a girl that was like fully like riddled with like some sort of like skin disease and it was like mm. basically sores all over her mm. like body essentially and um and i'm not trying to be graphic but that's just what it was when mm-hmm. they, when they said it so if you can picture this and so she was like i can't like there's nothing that anybody can really do on this thing and she was in the hospital for it it was horrible so i think somebody came in and spoke with her and was like see this one on your toe right here on your foot focus on healing that one and then when that one's healed, go to the next one. And like within like eight months, she was like completely like done with it. Like really, I just think I'm telling you, dude. Like the mind and the body connected. Like if you can like figure it out, I think is like the most powerful thing in the world. With a little love sprinkled into it, and a little yeah, little little love, dude. Yeah, it's it's yes. it's super interesting to me. Like it, like I, 
But you have to get the mindset. Like I, I like now I try to do it. Like it's got to be something that you really want. You know right. what I mean? Too. So like now I, I'll even try to like visualize and bring my mind to like something. You know, like when it comes to like my physique or it comes to having a routine of going to the gym every day or anything like that. And like I'll tell myself this is it, this is it, this is it, and that happens for like two days and then like slides off. You know. Yeah. So it's like I think that there's you there's a the huge connection. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a connection. It's got to be something you're passionate about. Like yeah. I was passionate about making that team. So yeah, I think that's all I wanted. Right. And it's all you think about. Right. Um. And so and then back to the kids thing too. What you're saying. What I was told by a, a coworker of mine that says, "Hey, f the f's and praise the a's," and and also get in the trenches with your kids. You know, like if they are, if you see that they're having an, they have an F and they have B's and C's and A's and everything else, why do they have an F in that one? You, you could tell them, figure it out, turn your stuff in. Well, there might be a reason <coughs> other than maybe just being a kid of like why they're having that F. Well, figure it out. Like, what is it? What are you struggling with? Let's talk it. Let me, let me sit down with you. Right. Show me a lesson. Let's figure this out. And sometimes it's also, as we all know in our jobs, communication between a between a boss an employee between a teacher and a student it's the communication breakdown oh i emailed them or i talked to them but they don't understand that you know so it's like okay well then tell me and let me try to figure this out and i've had to email a couple of teachers not in a mean way but hey you hey mother yeah this is my kid my kid's so much smart and you dumb seriously my kid's so smart <laughs> you, don't, you don't know teaching you're playing on a golf course get back in the classroom um anyway so, but yeah, yeah. Sometimes you got to like email a teacher and go, "Hey, this is my kid, and this is what they're not understanding." Oh, okay. Well, here's, and then they will email me. That's what's great about email right now. Uh, about email, this is their email to you know to me earlier. Oh, then I read my son's email or my daughter's email, and I'm like, oh, okay, I see that they're kind of trying to explain it, but they're not. They're having a difficult time even explaining it. One thing that I've learned, like. Is the way we've learned we learned how to do certain math problems or something like that totally flipped upside down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like my daughter will like oh, FaceTime me or like yeah. and like, Dad, can you help me with this math problem? I'm like, Yeah. Oh yeah, this is how you do it. And she's like, No, it's not. No, it's not. You gotta put the apples over here. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. And I'm like, what? I go, I go, hold up. I go, All right, okay, then let's do it together. So I'll do my way. She'll do her way. I'm like, Oh, same answer. Weird. Yeah. It's, yeah. But it's crazy. Like, why can't we just all have the same under the same umbrella on how to freaking teach kids how to divide. I don't get it. Or I, whatever I have, that looks like. When, Fractions yeah, or whatever. Yeah, when I was, yeah. I, I mean, it's a little harder when you're a kid, but once you understand it, you get it. When you're a kid and it's like, okay, make this math tower, that might work for like three kids in the classroom, but everyone's learning it. It's like, come on. The thing with me, like, I was like horrible, horrible with math, dude. Mm. Like, and it came to like calculus and different things like that. But if you put me in the field now, and have me shoot a laser and figure out different calculus, basically, yeah, or like yeah, whatever yeah. that looks like. I can do that all day long, but it's practical to me. To do it on a piece of paper is dumb to me. Yeah, like I can't like figure that out. Like I, I can't do it. I'd rather watch paint dry. Yeah, or well, look we, or look at you. And when it comes to math, usually what I do is now Google or call Zach Peterson. <laughs> I'm like, hey Zach, I can't figure this out, buddy. He's got you. Yeah. Plus, I'm stoked for him right now. Me too. I, re- I reached out to him. I sent him a message. I said, hey, I texted him. You, I know you told me that you talked to him, but yeah. I'm like, hey, man, I'm so happy to see that. Dude, I'm so happy on. that we finally have like a real life 90 Day Fiance <laughs> right at our back door. We don't have to watch that no-neck guy anymore. You know what I mean? Well, now we got the, yeah, I mean, he's still kind of, Zach doesn't have the best neck. He's still kind of a little no-neck. At least he's in shape. <laughs> <laughs> and he's not awkward. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, if you guys don't get that joke, uh, Zach's got his girlfriend finally visiting him from overseas. No, she's here for ninety days. It's done. It's for, either gonna. It's it's the ninety day fiance, like legit. She's here for a full ninety. He has to, have to marry her ninety days, or she's back. That's Are, a ninety day fiance. It's the same thing as the show, dude. F- we, we have a real life. That's what I'm we saying. We have bring a, him on. We have a real life ninety oh day fiance gosh. going on. We have a real life ninety day fiance going on. And so if oh. Like a real deal. He's got 90 days to marry her. She's back. I'm, I'm, I'm ordained. I don't know. If, I don't. I mean, I don't know if he wants all this posted, but. I'm sure no one's going to listen. This is like the end of the episode. They've already moved on from their lives. So they have, this is probably the best part. <laughs> <laughs> we got real deep on this yeah, episode. Yeah, we'll, we'll bring him on. We'll bring him on. We got real deep on we this did. episode. We did. We did. That was good, though. Sometimes it's nice to get a little sentimental with each other. 
You know, now you're getting choked up about the guy in the computer. Dude, I'm telling like, you that 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 effed me up. I've seen a couple of those things, but they, that effs me up. Yeah, I don't like watching stuff like that. Like, dude, I, here's the next thing about like what you're saying about that to circle back. <laughs> yeah, um, they none of this shit was ha- like because they got this camera in their hand that they think that oh, now I can really antagonize this guy or let's see how we can push the buttons and have this guy freak. What if he would have jumped the counter and beat the piss out of both right, of these guys? Yeah, you have, like, no, you have no clue. Yeah, it's like you guys, there's, it, the social media and the, these or, phones are stupid. Dude, I swear on everything when I saw this and I showed, I showed my kids this. I did. I showed yeah. the, 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 the video. I said, hey, guys, you guys got to see this. Okay, this is real life. This is what real mental health looks like, what real issues look like. So let's do our best to love. And the guy each other. said he had mental health problems. right? He said it before, yeah. And my and my daughter, who who is very a huge advocate for mental health, she's seventeen. She's like, oh my gosh, and this person still pushed pushed him. And I said, yeah. I said, if this guy had a gun, yeah, he'd kill him. He'd, he'd kill himself, or them, or them, and then himself. It yeah. would have. He that guy was so in his own head. That he would have walked off. He would have thought his life was over. He's going to go viral. The dude's got to go fund me right now. He's making money off his GoFundMe. Good. The Holiday Inn guy. <laughs> He's capitalizing that. Yeah. He's not that bad. No, no. <laughs> hey, do you want to stage something real quick? <laughs> I'll split 50-50. You and me. <laughs> you're antagonizing me, though. <laughs> yeah. I'm just thumping on you. No, you're antagonizing me. I'm the one that's got to get mad. Oh, okay. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. So you get paid, but we'll cut it 50-50. They're not going to pay me. They'd pay you if I antagonized you. No, but if they if they saw me, because you're such a gentle, you'd be like a gentle giant. Like, yeah, but like, that's the problem. That's the thing. <laughs> if you don't know me, <laughs> if want, you don't, I don't want to joke. About, I mean, I was really messed up by this guy. I feel bad for even joking about. I know, this but guy. here's the thing. Like, if you don't know me, like personally know me, Blow like me. if if I walk into a uh, and I've had this happen many times because just my size, I guess I don't know. Yeah, people think I'm like the scariest guy in the world, but like. I'll give you my shirt. I don't care. I, you know what I mean. I'm a nice guy. That's when you get scared. That's when you get scarier, though. When I give you my shirt. Yeah, because then we that, just was... 300 pounds of jackness. <laughs> just like put that back on. I'm a little more intimidated now. <laughs> Is that a belly button ring? <laughs> do you have a, Do you have nipple yeah. piercings that are that are that have a chain from each nipple down to your belly button ring? <laughs> Is that a, Excuse me, sir. I'm not trying to upset you, but is that a navel piercing? <laughs> With inverted nipples? <laughs> Those are fake. <laughs> oh, that's so stupid. Uh, all right. Well, hey, guys. We're, we're wrapping up right now. Thank you so much uh, for listening. And please hit us up with questions. I appreciate everyone. Shout out to the Patreons real quick. Uh, shout out to uh, Idrid and Kellen and Cassie and Casey and Adam. I appreciate Desi and Holly and Ira and Amanda. And then I skipped one. Uh, who's oh, Seth? Shout out to Seth. Shout Seth, out to Seth. Bring him out here one of these days. Good Seth Loop, the old fumble, <laughs> the old fumble <laughs> touchdown stealer. <laughs> Love you, buddy. Yeah. All right. Thanks for listening, everyone. Joey, thanks for coming on again. I'll, hey. fi- I'll find someone else, I swear, but I appreciate you just keep coming in here to kind of like help with the guests. I mean, I will. Don't worry. What are you talking about? It makes it sound like that. I can't get anyone but you. Oh, yeah. I get that. I understand. Yeah, anytime, man. I'm free. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. Have a great rest of your week and a great weekend. Take care. Go, Kooks. Paul, we're going back. Paula back. Joey Hollenbeck. <laughs>